Hello my friends and welcome back to a continue by and let's play Ace Attorney of Power Justice, the remaster for the PS5. My name is the Platinum Spire, this year's story is given gentlemen. Today we go back in time, seven years, to that fateful trial that led to Phoenix being disbarred as an attorney. At least I hope that we're, that's what we're going to do. All indications seem to be thus, but let's jump into it, shall we, and find out. Showdown time. I... I lost? It's only a game of poker. A game I played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Huh. Well... Seems I found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Why yes, over a game of cards. That was how we first met, seven years ago. Seven years earlier, Phoenix Wright's final trial. April 19th, 927 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Didn't the Ace Attorney Investigations also have a seven-year gap between cases? Like, I, I, I know there was a gap. I, I'm just not exactly sure on the time, but I thought it was seven years, wasn't it? Ooh, okay. It's been a long time since I felt like such a rookie, and we got music. Yeah, oh, it feels good. Got to try and relax. Ah, good morning, Mr. Enigmar. Oh, I like the name. Enigmar obviously being a play on Enigma, right? Oh, and he has a different outfit than the others. He still has the uh the 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 card suits in the um the back of the cape, but he wears a clover instead of a diamond. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. I understand I'm asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't, trust me. Oh, oh god. She's so adorable. And she's even she's wearing his colors too. With with the little diamond. Oh, morning, Daddy. Ah, I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? Ha 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 I am fine as always. This old boy is here to help me, after all. That's young man to you. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is she talking about? Oh, oh boy. Huh? Me? Ah, look what he started. Um, ah, uh, here. It seems it's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than 10 swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me on my life's work, I give thanks and farewell. The Magnifique Grammarie. What's this? Uh, I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you, or so such? Hmm? Uh, not from the looks of it. 
What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. Notebook page added to the court record. We already have a couple things here. We should take a look at those. As we listen to the great music. Ah, oh, yes! Love the music, it's so good. A very important badge, proving my identity. Oh no, that was some of that. Each attorney's badge has a number engraved on the back. No two numbers are the same. So if you drop it, people will know it was you. Better make sure I don't lose mine. Yeah, let's let's make sure we don't lose ours. Crime scene photo. Body found in hospital room shot in the head. Looks like a mage. Why is there another bullet hole in the clown? Okay. Very weird picture. Got a golden gun there. Oh, it's it there's a page missing. That page missing must be this page. Seems face clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than 10 switch minutes remain. Those that supported me on my life's work, I give thanks. Farewell. Magnify Grammarie. Is this the original Grammarie? This is a Magnify? Because clearly there's a page missing. Uh, cause of death. Let's see. Victim's name. Yep. The Magnify Grammarie. Age 67 male. Estimated time of death, April 13th, between 11 and 11.30. Cause of death, loss of blood from bullet wound. Wait, it's not the, it's not the bullet that killed him? Uh, no, malignant tumor found in victim's liver. Did he take his own life? Hmm. Shady Enigma. The Shady Enigma. Oh, that's good. The client in this case, Susan goes by his stage name, Zach Grimmery. And the Magnify Grimmery, the victim in this case, died after being shot in the head while in the hospital. No, he didn't die being shot in the head, he died from blood loss. Well, how do you feel about the child today? We'll get to it, somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win, then yes. Ah, they're calling him a true thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Is this going to be, uh, Elder Gavin? Of course, there's one of those every year. The switching of an attorney's just before the trial. I know it is a difficult situation I put you in. But, allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So, do your best, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me a pep speech. I'll do what I can. Ha 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 I see you do not understand. You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. Impossible? Yes, is it that right, Tusi? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday. And the information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, I'll do what I can, for their sake. I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. My client is Shady... Shadi Enigma, known to the world as Zach Grammary, a wildly popular magician, star of Troop Grammary. His mentor, the Magnify Grammary, was a bre rare breed of magician. He single handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. And Zach Grammary is the suspect. April 19, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 7. Yep, there he is. Oh, it's the younger Gavin. Court is now in session with the trail of Shady Enigma. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ah, the doubts. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking. Is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzzkill, really. Buzzkill? Is this some kind of new crime? One of the verse, this is a trial, yeah. Where are the sweaty palms, the hopping hearts? 
A governor's concert got ten times the thrill this gig's got. Who uh, were you again? Clavier, Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started legally, ya. Yeah. Gavin, the defense attorney Christoph Gavins? Ah, I figure my brother is more famous in this part of town. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Yeah, I, 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 I had, I had almost forgotten because of all the things that have happened in this game. Christoph Gavin was a defense attorney, so his brother became a prosecutor? I never put those two and two together, but that's really interesting. Javier Gavin, lead singer for the mega hit band, The Gaviners. You're out of your league, rock boy. Oh, come on, don't underestimate people. I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we were thinking. All the dots indeed. Two, my debut single, 13 years hard time for love and platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, ya. Yeah? Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected, your rock accent, by the way. I'm just getting warmed up, hair tiny bite. Perhaps you'll be so kind as to fill us in on the case. Actung, baby. Time to call on the opening act. But what's his name again? Ah, yes. Detective Gumshoe. Hit it! Oh, yes! We get Gumshoe back! Oh, my God. My favorite character. It's so good to see you. And you are... Hey, you were the one calling me up here. I mean, sir. The name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. Hey, you! Huh? Me? Ah, today's the day, pal! Yes! We got the pal back! Oh, it feels so good. Ah, today I win and you lose! I got the confidence in my testimony today, you see? What? You normally lack confidence in your testimony. Pair detective, this is my stage. Can the antics? Huh? All oh, this hey youing and such. And I could care less about the history together. Eric! Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. What well, happened six days back in the room at General Hospital? The facts are simple as they come. Well, here's the crime scene. Victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. Killer comes in and bam! Puts a pistol in his forehead and bam! Lights out. Alright, I, I jumped on the bam part, but you know what I mean. He put a bam in his head, your honor. Well, them's the facts. Hmm. And not so long ago, the victim, Magnified Grummery, was a famous man. Look at that picture. Yeah, the entire country would use magical spell, as it were. I believe that's the second time we've seen it, but still, I like the picture, regardless. Ah, oh, yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnafi to one of my generation, and you'd be likely to get a blank star. I wonder if that's still common today. Like, do people recognize the names like Copperfield? If I say Copperfield to someone who's, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, would they know who Copperfield was? Is magician, is magic even popular anymore? I know there's a show Fool Us, which has at least continued uh, the idea of magic. But, I mean, are there still any big names who do magic? Like, you know, when I was younger that you would get fascinated by? Yes, though I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Garmory has made quite a name for themselves. Well, anyhow, the retired magnifier has been in the hospital for the last year. Hmm, ah, what was it? 
It was a uh, mild ignorant tutor or something. <laughs> Doing something to his liver, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, malignant tumor, perhaps. In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. Magnifies chart added to the court record. Diagnosed with a malignant tumor, given three months. Hmm. Facts do seem simple enough. But something's not right. The victim was already climbing to a three-month starway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock 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 on heaven's door? Why shoot him? I wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but it's true. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Well, incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. When he was shot with the pistol, the syringe was found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. Small syringe added to the court record. Your sword administering insulin shots has been washed. It shows no sign of use. Hmm, I believe the question before us is clear then. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? Well, that's very sensible of you, Your Honor. Normally you're like... He's guilty. He's the only one who could have done it. Or, you know, he's, it's, it's always you're guilty before innocent, right? I mean, that seems like the thing. But yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. Understanding motive would help a lot in this case. Uh, what reason could he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us to as the circumstances of the shooting. Yeah, yes, sir. Witness testimony. The circumstances. Well, actually, the victim kind of ordered the defendant to do him in. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, there's no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. Hmm, what? You're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the fox. I have here the letter in question. To my beloved student, Zach. Um, I can't read that fast. Hold on. To my beloved student, Zach. To you, I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th at 11.05 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot. One shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. The Magnify Grammary. Let's take a look at this syringe real quick as well. I always hate it getting shots. Yeah, I know that feeling. I guess Magnify was giving himself the insulin shots. There's no way I could do that. <sighs> huh? Wait. If Magnify used this to inject his insulin, why are there no traces of it having been used? Hmm, something to keep in mind. Patient say Magnify Grammary, age 67 male. Malignant tumor in liver has progressed to final stage with no hope of recovery. Patient has three months to live. Patient has chronic diabetes which requires regular insulin. It's very usual indeed. Although, could such a thing as a letter cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder. I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Ah, you cannot refuse and we both know the reason why. Take to gumshoe. Can you explain this to the court? Ah, fortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Why have him come at 1105 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details, Herr Attorney. Well, was there some reason? 
As it turns out, there was. Every night for half hour, starting at 11. The victim, magnified calamity, was given an IV. An IV? There it is in the picture on the side of the bed. 11 o'clock, a doctor. Mm -mm. At 11, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. But why is the IV not in him? It's on the bed next to him. Or is it the things that are on his chest? No, those are monitoring his chest. Yeah, the needle is clearly to the right. This happened every night without fall. So that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an entire untimely interruption. During his IV. Very well, shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me. I like how both Phoenix and Apollo sweat in almost the same way. Cross-examination. The circumstances. Well, actually, the victim kind of ordered the fainted to do him in. Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all, just as he commanded. It could be a setup. But let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Ah, thanks, pal. Huh. Fine, I can play it as slow as well as I can play it fast. On with the test, I'm going to detect a gum shoe. Well, a few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. And this letter was sent by the victim? Ah, there it is, gotcha! You all mine this time, pal! Huh? I had the handwriting checked out, of course. It's the victim's own mistake. Ah, uh, I see. Ha 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 ha! Score one for the boys! I didn't lose. I was just ascertaining the facts. Wait a second. This letter. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I was gonna say, did the letter specifically address Zach? And yes, it does. Because it's possible that if it didn't address Zach, then it could have been anyone. So why am I so annoyed? But a uh, letter ordering your death? Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace, even now, your honor. Ah, so anyway, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. Well, if any deal was asked to him, shot the old man in the forehead. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thing for you, pal! Learn to think for yourself! Get that noggin cracking! You failed across the concept of questioning, detective. Well, first, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead loud and clear. I can see that. But I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. Really? Really? You failed to grasp the concept of shooting people as bad, detective. You also found the defense pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue shows it had been fired recently. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright. As far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. The photo. Maybe there's something in there I can use. So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. I think there's a hole in the prosecutor's argument. Clearly, Mr. Ignagmar. Um, hold on. I'm gonna... I, I still have evidence to press. Unfortunately, nothing in this picture suggests he didn't do it. Oh, I see. That is unfortunate. Huh? Well, let's play it no mind and carry on, shall we? I like a fast tempo. Huh? 
Hey, I still got stuff to talk about, pal. Everyone's so eager to move on, so of course I want to slow down. Is there really not a single clue in this picture? Well, I've already mentioned the clown having a giant bolt in his in his head. Back to test where you would detect it. Ah, the bullet was fired from the pistol around at the scene. There ain't no doubt about it. You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? Ah, that's the one. It's a funny looking gun, so there's no mistake in it. They compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the vi bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullets for a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. Ah, you bet we did! And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir! Why are you so certain? What pile of sand has your head been sucking all this time, pal? Never heard of Zack and Balance quick draw shoot him? Huh? What's that? I want the defendant's specialties. Ooh, look at the picture. Oh gosh, look at that picture. That picture is amazing. Absolutely incredible. But who's the girl? Yeah, who's the girl? Zack and Fallon stand on either side of a girl. Well, then they shoot. But the bullets don't hit her. They said they hit everything else on stage. This is one of the pistols they used in the show. Got a great design, huh? Kids love it. Many boys and girls join the police because of that pistol I hear. You know, that would explain a lot about the police force. Troop Grammarie stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held on to that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. Ah, you got it, sir. Here she is. Well, this truly is a blast of the past. Ah, it's a stage pistol for magic shows, you see. But it can fire real bullets. Hmm, it looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces that haven't been fired recently. So, were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for varying gloves. They might say that a lack of fingerprints is, in fact, a fingerprint of its own. Uh -huh, intriguing point, well made. Whoa, 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 not well made? Not intriguing? In any case, the court accepts his evidence. Stage pistol added to court record. Fire with one bullet, bullet, barrel, marks, match, bullet found, and victim. No fingerprints found. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to a testimony. I didn't have time to gather all the details before coming here. This testimony might be my only source of information. Better pay attention and read this letter carefully. Okay, I know he says read this letter carefully. To my beloved student, Zach, to you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot. One shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. So if you read this carefully, he does say I trust the task of lowering my life's curtain. But he doesn't ever say, shoot me. He just says, shoot square in the forehead. And sure enough, it looks like there is someone that got shot in the forehead. It looks like there's two people got shot in the forehead, but I'm going to the picture. The photo. Uh, shot something else. That's true, because if I had done this, 
then I want to have gotten that gun in my in my evidence thing, the stage pistol. So how would that have worked? Pretty sure we're gonna go back to that testimony at some point. If you look closely, you can see how pistols made to bend here. It's a one shot only model, and I guess this bend is where you load it. So this is a famous Grammarie Golden Gun. They say kids used to love pretending they have one of those. I wonder if they pretended to miss their targets too. So the gun doesn't shoot straight. So if you want to shoot him on the forehead, it would be really hard to do that because it doesn't shoot straight, right? Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Ah, bingo, pal! And that's why the defendant popped a one in the forehead. Oh, the defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Objection! But, and you can prove that with this photo. I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired fire like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. If he didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did the defendant shoot? Uh, that clown. Take that. A clown doll? Take a closer look, see? It's been shot in the forehead, too. Ugh, there's a hole in his forehead. Yes, and a hole in the prosecutor's claim. Objection! Ah, oh, and I suppose you have a reason as to why he shoot the clown doll. Well, he didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead. Ah! Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot one shot square in the forehead. Yes, that's what I pointed out. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the clown doll square in the forehead. I like how Phoenix is leaning on the desk like that. He seems so confident now. The Vince has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead definitely looks like it was shot. Bayless, send someone to investigate this matter. Objection! I admit, I'm impressed, but I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Perhaps he did have to shoot the forehead as ordered. But the letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm, the bullet hole in the clown's doll forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue. Yet Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. No, but it should it, it, it should mean that there's reasonableness of doubt there's no evidence to say he shot him in the forehead if 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 he shot the clown then the letter does not apply motive like the prosecution claims you cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim no but you can't say for sure he did shoot the victim society mr white how sad it is to see the mighty fall God, I hate this court system sometimes it's like we should not need to prove someone's innocent we need you to prove they're guilty how sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. Ah, so what if he shot the clown? He will sh he still shot the victim, pal. Eh, not entirely. Press. Nope, nope, wrong button. Hold on one sec, I need to write something down. So, let me get this straight. I like to take notes. You're saying my client first shot the clown, then shot the victim. Hey, not a bad summary, pal. More of a confirmation than a summary, but whatever. That was really for more of a confirmation than a summary. 
But don't offense, Tony, since this is enough for themselves. It's kind of interesting that we're focused on a forehead in this case when he's constantly calling uh, Apollo hair forehead. <laughs> Do these people ever miss a chance to mock me? Well, now that Mr. Vyatt's gotten that out of his system, shall we continue with the testimony? Okay, so this is the same. So, if we go to this one, he's still shot the victim pal, but the gun isn't designed to shoot like that. Objection! The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Ah, hey, yeah, but like I said, pal, I actually shot the clown in the forehead. He went in, uh... Objection! Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon, how? It's quite simple, your honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Ah! If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim too. Okay, well, okay. I, I, I wasn't thinking that, but it's typical Ace Attorney where I get the right answer through the wrong conclusion. <laughs> Does it say that? Fires one real bullet. It says fires one real bullet. It doesn't say it can only hold one bullet, though. So maybe that was a, uh, that could have been more clear, but still. The dad's not to cut to dig, she not even close. All they had to do was reload the piece to laugh to the first shot. Objection! Oh? Where did he get the extra bullet? They're not so easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it. Urgh! <sighs> I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party is just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet beyond my good looks and startling record size. An utter lack of humility. Hmm, man, what's this? Seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, Herr Detective, that was just a bum up act. Erk! Now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? Ready to back and, I mean, for my decisive witness, of course. A witness who, you will find, can prove one thing for us. That it was Zach Remini who shot the victim in the forehead. Very well. We will pause for a 15 minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zach. Court is adjourned. To be continued already? Man, they're coming fast with the to be continues, aren't they? Save current progress, sure, why not? Why not, why not, why not? Jump right back into it, shall we? No! No, I did the wrong thing! I did the wrong thing, I did the wrong thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't look, flightless bird. I press circle instead of X or cross, whatever it's called. April 19th, 11.21 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. It's very impressive, Mr. Wright. I to say, expected nothing less. We've only just begun. I was hoping you could tell me a bit more about what happened, actually. I did not think you would believe me if I told you. Better that you discover the truth yourself. I was thinking of, you know. I think you need less thinking and, um, more talking. That night in the hospital, what really happened? Ah, the way your eyes gleam, Mr. Wright. You're scared to see. Speaking of which, where is she? You have seen the problem yourself, the leader. 
but one shot in the forehead. One, right? Yes, and the reason he speaks of. I could not deny my mentor's wishes, even if it meant my own death. Why not? This is something I will not say, for now, at least. What's this for now business? I had done many things in my life, some well, some poorly. But this is a cross we must bear alone to our graves. We? Oui? You want to know about the night and the incident. Finally, this guy sure likes to take his time getting the important stuff. Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. He snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. I found there upon his bedside table, two pistols. Two? Yeah, two? Yes. The one I had used on stage. And the one that had been used by my partner, Valent. Oh, for the Zack and Valent's quick draw thing? My mentor had the look of one sleep. Stood by his bedside, hearing only the light sound of his breathing. But then took the pistol into my hand. I cannot deny that my result faltered then for a moment. You faltered? You mean you thought about shooting him? Recall there was a reason I could not refuse his request. His last such request, though not his first. So there were other reasons, requests, you couldn't refuse before? To be honest, I've not always been steadfast. Fear I brought pain upon Trucy. Was Magnify coercing his disciples somehow? Just what was going on in the troop camera? Yet, in the end, I did not shoot him. Instead, I turned and shot the clown. I took the pistol I had fired and placed it in my pocket. In your pocket? I believe if you examine the bullet in the clown's head, you will find it to be different than the one in my mentor. The, uh, what were those called? Rifling marks? Yes, well, that is all I have to tell you concerning the case. Concerning the case? You mean there's something else you can't tell me? Heh, ha ha ha! You are a fascinating man, Mr. Wright. Uh, thanks? Yes, there is something. My mentor. His eyes opened. What? Magnify Grammary? The old devil. He was not asleep, you see. Of course, the gunshot would have woken him anyway. And there we had a last discussion. It's meant to pupil. It was not a long discussion. Maybe five, ten minutes or so. What did you talk about? Ha ha, Mr. Wright. Did I not just tell you? It does not concern this case. Zach Grammary. Seems pretty steadfast to me. Or maybe just stubborn. What was that? Um. There was this, uh. I don't know if it was a show or a movie, but there was this master who ordered his apprentice to. In order to unlock, like, the final secrets or the, the, the magic or the mastery, he ordered his disciple to kill him. And only the person who, um, only if he dies will you be able to give him all, or her, I forgot what it was, all of their power. And the apprentice basically said, I can't do it. I can't take your life. Regardless of what it means, I'll have to figure something else on my own. And the master basically laughed and said, well done. Uh, only those who, only those who refuse to kill the master are worthy of the master's power. Because someone willing to go dark to gain power isn't worthy of the final secrets. And it's bugging me because I can't remember what that was if it was a book if it was a tv show or if it was a movie but i know there's a memory i have of there being something like that if you perchance know what i'm talking about let me know in the comment section below but it is really really bugging me that i can't recall what that was 
God, it's gonna bug me. It's gonna bug me like all day long. It's gonna bug me all the way in my sleep. It's gonna bug me tomorrow. And I'll probably forget I had this conversation. But I mean, I, I know there was something like that. Oh, that, that, that bugs me. Zach Grammary, he seems pretty steadfast to me. Or maybe just stubborn. Mr. Wright, your presence is requested in the courtroom. Once again, I'm in your hands. Right, let's get back in there. April 19th, 1137 AM, District Court, courtroom number seven. Court is now back in Sish. During our recess, a bullet was found in and dug out from the clown's head. Well, this is news, and the rightfully marks. There was a time to do detailed analysis. Though they did find the weapon type matches the murder weapon. Hmm, well, that's not very conclusive, is it? Which is why I'm about to call my very decisive witness. Your decisive witness? How many times have I heard those words? Though they often turn out to be far less decisive than you think. Oh, don't worry on my account. I'm quite confident this witness will do the job. After all, he is intimately acquainted with the players on Little Production. Is this gonna be Valent? Being the other half of Troop Grammary's famous duo, Zark and Valent. Valent Grammary, yep. So, we get to meet the Great Magnifier's other disciple. Oh, look how he looks now. Perhaps we'll start by asking a name and occupation. He sure has changed in seven years. Valid, Grimini, Magician! Er, uh, and you're the, uh, the safest of witness, are you? You can prove your fellow student your partner's guilt. Fate, take an illusion! Fail the top, so today's! Wait, the shooting took place at the hospital at 11 o'clock at night. If you're a witness, does that mean you were there that late? If one were to do this logically, the conclusion is yes! Um, okay. I always get the characters, don't I? <laughs> I have an interesting fact for you. You see, someone dies before the climb. My witness received this. Well, that looks very familiar. Wait. That's the same letter that Grammar we received. Yes, yeah, so perhaps I should say, ta -da! Wow, look at that hair. Order, order, order. And what does it say? Surely not the same thing. Perhaps just to see for yourself. To my beloved student, Valent, to you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.20 p.m. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot one shot square in the forehead. You cannot refuse and we both know the reason why. Magnify Grammarie, so this is 15 minutes later. Why is practically the same. Court accepts this into evidence. Magnify a second letter added to the court record. This is most unusual. Exactly what was going on with you folks. What exactly was your true grammar up to? By what you mean? I'm just having trouble envisioning a man who would ask the students to kill him. Both of them, no less. It's just my opinion, Herr Judge. But from these letters, I'd say he was convert. Co he was coercing them, not asking them. We walked the magician's path together, and it did so we're doing. Shared much of our lives. When people are so close, there's a strain, a warping of relations, you might say. Yet this has nothing to do with the case at hand. By what you mean you're not going to tell us? Which makes me wonder even more about this reason they couldn't refuse. Well, let's get on with the testimony for starters. The defendant, Zach Grammary, stands accused. Tell us why. Oh, I'll do more than that. For where he walks, the red rose rises, singing hymns to the miracle that is magic. Fascinating. Though I hardly need to remind you that this evidence could just as clearly point to you as a suspect. The letter, the murder weapon, and now the two bullets found at the scene. In fact, the only difference seems to be the designated time. 
Ha 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 ha! As every magician knows, timing is everything. Yes. And now it's time to get this party fired up. What is testimony? The night of the crime. That night, I visited the hospital room at the time, Magna 5 requested. The night of the crime. The spell the gunpowder hung in the room, and my mentor had taken his final bow. A bow. I didn't imagine my fellow student might ever see the same instructions. Get to deal with the dead is still the deal. Desperate kiss, I give to the clown. Don't inform the doctor and the police. So he's also saying he shot the clown. Hmm, so you're the one who reported the crime? Indeed, I would think. This fact alone would clear my name of any suspicion. Wait. If he showed up at 11.20, why would he need to shoot the clown? Like, why would he need to shoot the clown? If he saw that his mentor was dead, then why did he have to shoot the clown? The mentor is already dead. Unless the mentor was alive. In which case, if the mentor was alive, he shot the clown to not shoot his mentor. But then again, if you've done that, then that means that he didn't die at 11.05. What time did he die? Between 11 and 11.30, that's very vague. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Yes, the cross-examination generally comes with the conclusions in this court. But if your testimony proves to be true, well then the defendant, Zach Grammary, is guilty. And if it wasn't Zach Grammary, then the killer was you, Val- Hmm. It's kind of, that kind of stinks because we know Val in the future and if this is true, that means Val is a murderer and maybe the, the murderer in the other case is Valent because he was trying to cover up something that happened in the past. And no disappearing act will get you out of that. Cross-examination, night of the crime. That night, I visited the hospital room at the time, magnify requested. Which, according to the letter, was 11.20 p.m.? Indeed. In magic, timing is everything. Right. Consider the illusion of teleportation. If I would appear on stage before my son double as that, how would that look? I don't know, how does it look you giving away secrets of your trade? Why would it reveal the very secrets of my magic? You just did that. Now that you've revealed the very secrets of your magic for us all, let us move on. <laughs> okay. This, I'm not the only one who caught that. You went at the Disney time, and what did you see? Which is weird because you want to tell us the secrets seven years from now. The smell of gunpowder hang in my room. And my mentor had taken his final bow. So, you weren't worried for your safety at all? I mean, you smelled gunpowder, yes? What if the shooter was still nearby? Look at that look. I, I did not consider this, to be honest. It is forbidden for a magician to have a good imagination. Wait, I thought that's required of a magician. Uh, really? Is it magic all about Lucia's imagination? How about this? You were the shooter, which is why you weren't afraid. Then now, you were the one imagining. It is forbidden for a lawyer to have a good imagination. How, 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 how would you know what's forbidden? The witness will refrain from pushing so suspiciously before responding. I'm pausing. My forbidden imagination is starting to imagine things. <laughs> I did not imagine my fellow student might ever see the same instructions. Which brings us back to this reason neither of you could refuse. So it does, and my partner, he did not refuse. But Magnify wrote the same thing to you. Why could you refuse if Zach couldn't? 
Because I have a woman's seal, of course. I also do this trick where I bend some bars, so perhaps seal isn't all so strong. So what you said? Mind if I continue? This guy is so confusing. Get a deal with the dead, it's still a deal. Desperate kiss, I gave to the clown. Okay, I see what he's saying. Even though he was already dead, he still had to go through with it. There were two bullet holes at the scene. One in the victim and one in the clown. You're saying the one who shot the clown was you? No doubt, my partner Zach has said much the same thing. Yeah, because of whatever did shoot the clown committed murder. Isn't this easy to prove though? All we had to do is get the rifling marks of the bullet that were, that that killed uh, Grimory and compare it with the gun at the scene. And then we had to have, oh, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work because you can't prove that the first Grimory left with the gun. But yes, you can because the gun was there. So there's two guns. Uh, there's two letters, there's two guns. Uh, I better dig around here a bit more and see what I can turn up. Mr. Valent, let me ask about something else concerning the crime scene, namely, um, the number of pistols. How many pistols were there when he entered the room? By which, you mean what, precisely? Two pistols were used in the Zach and Valent quick draw shooting, correct? One for each of you. You are well informed, yet. Only one of my own friends sat in the hospital room that night. What did Zach tell me back in the lobby? Of course, I had no intention of shooting my mentor. Snuck into his room that night at the appointed time. I found there upon his bedside table two pistols. I took the pistol I'd fired and placed it in my pocket. Hmm, I see no problem with that statement. Yu Yu Hakusho! That's it, Yu Yu Hakusho! Right! Oh man, my favorite anime. I'm sorry, that just hit me like a bullet. No pun intended. But Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, Genkai tells Yusuke that you have to kill me to get my power. And Yusuke basically says, you know, I can't kill you. You know, I'll have to figure another way out. She's like, you passed or something. Yeah, Yu Yu Hakusho and Genkai, man. My favorite anime, and for some reason I was blanking on that. No, ah. Oh. Sorry, back to the case. Only one pistol is viable, visible in the photograph of the crime scene after all. Huh. So you picked up that pistol and fired it? Indeed I did. Alakazam, alakazing, alakaboom. Hmm. Is the number of pistols really so important? Absolutely. The number of pistols is quite important, Your Honor, because the thing is, if, 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 if he shot the clown. Right. Right, right. Hold on, hold on. If, if Valent, no, 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 I'm Valent. If, um, Zach. If Zach had killed the, the old man. And the pistol marks, the riflings of the old man's death is on that original gun. Then, how did the second gun get there, first off? Secondly, if Zack took the gun that he shot with him, why wouldn't he take both guns? I don't know, I, I just feel like that's important somehow. I, I don't know how to explain it, my words are confusing, but very well. Please add this detail to your testimony. What can I do but obey? Only one pistol was in the hospital room that night, but then I shot the clown. So you took the only pistol there and fired it? That's correct. And the pistol was this one, which was left at the crime scene? Good show! I see you two are a magician of swords. And you're an idiot of swords. Do you have any idea what you just said? I see the fire in your eyes as you go out the witness. So how about heating up this tile a bit? These little ballads bore me. Hmm, I've got a hunch, but maybe that's all it is. Maybe I should ask about something else. Um, the bullet in the pistol? 
In order to shoot a pistol, you need a bullet. Where was this bullet? I entered the room and took the pistol in my hand. The bullet was already loaded, ready to fire at any time. A magician is always prepared, you see. Prepared for? One never knows when a miracle will be called for. A magician always has seven does in his pocket and a white rabbit up each sleeve. Clearly, we're dealing with professionals here. Hmm. Is this bullet that was loaded in the pistol really so important? I don't know. Without a loaded bullet, we wouldn't have a murder. It's very important, Your Honor. Very well. Please add this detail to the testimony. Oh my god, there's so much being added. What can I do but obey? The pistol was already loaded. I really had to pull the trigger. Wait, this is a different line. Yeah, it looks like we replaced this with the other thing. If the pistol was already loaded, something doesn't make sense. Why would the finger victim's fingerprints on it? You should know that we are too many are capable of many things. One of these being the levitation iron balls without touching them. There's no magic involved here. The shooter was just methodical is all. He simply vibed everything off the fingerprints. Can't really do much without with fingerprints that went there. Maybe I should ask about something else. Ah, uh, let's go back to the number of pistols. I think this one is more important. I, I have a feeling this one's more important. Oh, and let's uh go through the last bit of testimony here. Then you inform the doctor and the police. So you informed the police. What did you do then? What do you suppose I did? Use my magic to let take my mental scores, perhaps? I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Now please answer the question and sip the sarcasm. After I made my report, I called the doctor and we returned to the room. While we waited for the police to arrive, we discussed stomach medicine. They've confirmed this with the doctor, it all checks out. He praised Mr. Valen's knowledge of stomach medicine and fact. Ah, it is an honor I do not deserve, but I accept. Both of Magnify's students received the same letter. Both admit to having gone to the hospital that night. Two bullets were fired, and one of them killed Magnify. Time to find the cracks in this testimony. Okay, so this one here, only one pistol. Let's go to the first letter. That's not it. I mean, if you go to the first letter, though, it clearly says that there's two pistols, though. Ah, I must be on the wrong track. According to the defendant, Zach Grammary went into the room. There were two pistols on that table. And yeah, I knew there had to be something with the gun and number of pistols. I just didn't know which one to choose. I imagine the first letter would have made more sense because it clearly says that there would have been two. Well, you see, it says one shot, which implies that there would have had to have been two pistols. Two? One of those pistols he used to shoot the clown in the forehead. Then he left with it in his pocket. Of course, this is what he would say. Unlike the hopless clown, they must assume my defendant has some veins in his head. Well, what about what Mr. Vellant has told us? You see, there's something about his testimony that doesn't make sense. What might that be? I told you, I took the pistol that was there and shot the clown. That's your story, at least. Huh? But the rifling marks tell a very different story, Mr. Valent. Recall what Prosecutor Gavin told us. They compare the bullet taken from the victim's skull with the bullet fired from the gun. The rifling marks on this bullet were a perfect match. Ah! Mr. Valent, if you fired this pistol, then you shot the victim in the forehead. Order, order, order! 
Alright, this looks like a good place to stop. Much love to you all. Thank you for everything. I love you all so very much, and I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. We're making great progress here in Ace Attorney Apollo Justice. And until next time, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.